I'd like to welcome you to this special tutorial about how to achieve success in the medical market. I am your host, Dr. Vicki Rackner. I leverage my experience as a practicing surgeon, clinical faculty at the University of Washington School of Medicine, and serial entrepreneur to help people take the fastest and most direct path to success in the medical market. So I so appreciate your taking time today and I just wanna recognize that you're here for a reason. You're most likely here because you're interested in taking your practice to the next level, but why? Every time I talk with a new financial advisor prospect, I normally ask them, well, why is it that you're choosing the medical market? Why is it that you're choosing to use my service? And there is usually a dream behind that. I remember the day that I got a call from a woman by the name of Martha. She and her husband owned a boutique firm and they were already working with a fair number of doctors. And I said, well, Martha, you're so successful. Why are you enrolling in the course? And she said, well, I'll tell you, I've always had a dream to take my family to the Dolomites for Christmas. And I just like the extra income to be able to afford that. Well, sure enough, that December, I got a note from her. She and her family were in the Dolomites. So you've got a dream too. Is there something nicer that you'd like to do for your family or yourself? Maybe you'd just like to climb a higher mountain and see the view from up there. Well, I'm here to help you achieve that dream. And I do want to say that the medical market is a wonderful market but it's not quite for everyone. So hopefully you'll also get clarity in this tutorial about whether or not this makes sense for you. So why do I do this presentation on an annual basis? Well, every year I hear financial advisors say, well, the things that worked for us in the past just aren't working anymore. So there have been lots of changes. And so I'd like to give you the most up-to-date information and beyond. What have I learned this year? So over the next hour, I'm gonna answer three questions. Why work with doctors? Why do it now? And how do you do it? What are some of the breakthrough ideas? So you're gonna take away some of the best practices of high-performing advisors. You are going to get three stunningly simple marketing campaigns that worked. I mean, over this past year, I feel blessed to have helped my financial advisor clients increase their assets under management by tens of millions of dollars, add doctors to their list of clients for whom they do planning and to whom they sell insurance products. Um, you're welcome to go on the website and you know read some comments from your colleagues. Like I was so delighted to get this note from Martin who told me that he was in the elite circle of his peers and I'm humbled to say that he thought that our work together had a piece of it. You know, Franklin achieved breakthrough results. Um, Spencer had been struggling in the medical market and he applied a simple idea that, you, that you're gonna learn today that transformed things for him. I've had people who have been in the market for years, top advisors to doctors, come and take my courses and find value in it. Um, you're also going to take away ways to avoid costly and common mistakes. This tutorial is a little different than most webinars you probably go to for a couple of reasons. First, you're going to get insider secrets about the world of medicine from a doctor. So I'm not trained as a financial advisor. I don't sell financial products or services. But what I do know very well is how doctors think and how to press their buy button. And the most important point to take away from today's presentation is that doctors are wired differently than you are. Um, I think of the world of prospects divided into two groups. There are suits and there are white coats. So there are people with a business mindset like you have, and there are people with a clinical mindset. And we're gonna be talking about how to engage these specific people today. Now, how are they different? Well, everyone wants to be successful, but the metrics by which success is measured is different. The thing that drives behavior is different. 
For you, what is the ultimate measure of your success? It's your profit. It's how well you're doing financially. You know, you might get together with a buddy and you could say something like, you know, I had such a great year. My revenue is up 20% this year. And your buddy would pat you on the back and say, that's great. If the doctor went into the doctor's dining room or the surgeon's lounge and said, I've had a great year. My revenue is up 20%. They would get laughed out. That's just not the way doctors think. What a doctor would say is things are working great for me. My patient load is up 20%. Or my clinical outcomes have improved by 20%. So for suits, it's all about profits. For white coats, it's all about service. And of course, both have to have both, but the primary driver for doctors is service. And if you would like to get an appreciation about the importance of understanding this difference, let me share with you my favorite episode of Shark Tank. As you know, this is a TV show where entrepreneurs go in to pitch their, their companies in hopes of getting funding. Well, one day a doctor entered the Shark Tank to get funding for his company, Syndaver. He sold synthetic cadavers. This is a billion dollar market. He'd already have a, a couple million dollars in sales. The sharks were all engaged. And I thought to myself, man, this guy is gonna get a five shark deal. But then the question started. Mr. Wonderful said, well, tell us about your revenue. Tell us about your profitability. And the doctor said, well, you know, I could be making lots of profits, but profits just aren't important for me. It's about making a difference. And with that answer, he only got one deal with Robert Hershevac that fell apart in a week. Well, what happened here? This guy offered great value. I mean, this was a terrific deal for the sharks. The problem was though, that this doctor had not communicated to the shark and sort of hit their buy buttons, said to them things that were important to them. So he didn't get any deal. And imagine that there's another reality TV show called Surgeon's Lounge. So you enter the Surgeon's Lounge, there's five surgeons sitting in plush leather chairs, and you'd like to get as many of them as possible to do business with you. I see too many professional financial advisors make the exact same mistake that that doctor made when he went on Shark Tank. They try to talk about the money. And that's not really what doctors care about. So the ability to tweak your message so that you're gonna get in the door in the first place and then inspire the doctors to take action is important. So a suit would say, show me the money. That's what Mr. Wonderful would say. What a doctor wants to know first and foremost are, do you understand me? Are you one of me? Do you care about me? And it's only unless and until you can do that, that you can build a business relationship with doctors. All right, I do want to say that I'm gonna talk about how to engage white coats. Um, however, I will point out that if you wanna work in the medical market and why work in the medical market? Well, it's the fastest growing market in the US. It's something that's not gonna be outsourced. If you're interested in working in the market, um, but not necessarily interested in dealing with this, the complexity of this doctor mindset, there are places that you can find suits in the medical market. There are executives of hospitals and clinics. While most physicians make reliable six-figure income, the C-suite executives make seven-figure incomes. They influence a lot of people. That might be a place for you to go. There are physician entrepreneurs who may have started an app, who um, may be a real estate investor. And those people may or may not be wearing the white coats. They you know, may be a clinician who owns a surgery center. Um, you can find many of these through an organization called SOAP, the Society of Physician Entrepreneurs. 
Maybe you know a way of finding physician real estate investors, or maybe you run into doctors who are just really savvy business people. I've been watching a lot of baseball. So it's some doctors are kind of like the switch hitters. They both have the business mindset and the um, clinical mindset. So you can find them. I also want to point out that when I talk about working with uh, doctors, what I really mean are physicians, those are the people with MD after their name, dentists who have DMD or DO after their name, pharmacists make great clients, nurse anesthetists can actually generate higher incomes than primary care physicians, and they tend to be savers and physicians assistants. So this is a really wide and broad market. And your goal is to find your place. Where does this fit best for you? Okay, the other reason that this is different is that here we're gonna talk about doctor's relationship with money. And that is the topic of my most recent book, The Myth of the Rich Doctor. I would be happy to offer you a free digital copy of this book to see. But the bottom line is, that for doctors, money is the ultimate taboo topic. Like some of my patients um, didn't like to talk about what I call the embarrassing peas, peeing, pooping, and procreating. And I had a patient who actually died of embarrassment. She was too embarrassed to tell the doctor about the blood in her stool. By the time the colon cancer that had caused the blood was diagnosed, it was too late. The disease was widely metastatic and she wound up dying. Well, Doctors are experiencing the consequences of treating money as a taboo topic. And so as you speak with doctors, it's important to remember that for them, talking about money is like you talking about your bowel habits or your sexual issues. I mean, it's just tough to do. It doesn't come naturally to them, mostly because of this wiring as a white coat rather than a suit. Um, next, you're going to get an outsider's perspective. Um, so I am your prospect. I am your client. I am not one of you. I don't come from your world. And so part of my value to financial advisors is that I am able to say to them, hey, if you say this, this is most likely how doctors are going to respond. I mean, you've got a certain training. You've got a certain mindset. But I'll tell you, doctors treat money differently. They have different ideas about how to build wealth that are oftentimes wrong. So doctors don't know what they don't know about money. They know things that are wrong. And I can help you understand what some of those things are. And lastly, our intentions align. We're all here for the same reason to help doctors build wealth. Now, the why is a little different. Um, you would like to be here to take your practice to the next level. The reason I'm here is quite honestly, it's because I'm here to help doctors. There's only so much I can do for doctors and I know that doctors need your help. So I know that if more doctors have a more secure financial foundation, more doctors will be able to stay in medicine and will be happier. And this is something that I'm very passionate about. So in addition to my Targeting Doctors brand, I have another brand called Thriving Doctors for Doctors, where I help them achieve the personal, professional, and financial rewards that attracted them to a career in medicine. The reason I mention this to you is that all of the content that I develop for doctors is available for you to engage doctors. The things that I write for doctors, you know, either publish articles in Physician Money Digest or the Journal of Medical Practice Management or the books or articles or webinars, all of these things are sort of yummy treats that you can use to attract doctors. All right, why is all this stuff important? Well, most marketing advice is dead wrong and physicians are immune to conventional marketing message. Physicians have acute financial pain. So those are all great things, but the problem is that the barrier to entry is higher than ever. Okay, are you in the right place? 
uh, in this tutorial. Well, if you're a veteran in the medical market, just interested in finding out what's working right now, yes, you're in the right place. If you want to jump into the medical market and avoid the steep learning curve, yes, you're in the right place. If you want to leverage the opportunities of our current climate, including our new tax laws, yes, you're in the right place. And if you want to take the most direct path to success, yes, you're in the right place. This tutorial is not for you. If you are looking for a get rich quick scheme, doctors work hard to get to where they are. I went to four years of undergraduate school, four years of medical school, and five years of residency in order to be able to treat patients. Doctors work hard. It's hard work to get involved with the medical market. There are a lot of financial and professional rewards here. You're going to make a big difference, but it does require an investment. You're probably not in the right place if you're hoping that I'm going to be promoting some kind of campaign where I will just fill your calendar with Dr. Prospects. While I will show you how to do things, I'm not offering sort of a done for you package where I'm just going to deliver prospects to you. And if you lack a spirit of service, if you don't have a soft spot in your heart for doctors, and feel really dedicated to helping them. Let me save you some trouble and say that it's probably best for you to go elsewhere. Um, I always say if you want to conduct business like doctors, conduct yourself as one. And doctors are driven by a sense of service. And when you sit down and talk with somebody, you can tell who has it in their heart. If you don't have it, I, it's going to be an uphill struggle for you. So I, I would graciously encourage you to find another market. The medical market probably is not going to work very well. In the spirit of full disclosure, um, I have learned most of my lessons the hard way. You know, I'll say, you know, wow, that is the perfect thing to say. How did you figure that out? Well, the reason that I figured that out is that I struggled. And I had to figure out a way for this to work for me. So most of the stuff, most of the answers I give others are answers that I gave myself. And let me just quickly give you my story. So I call myself an accidental surgeon. I was in a graduate program. When I fainted on my way to the bathroom, I had an ovarian cyst that ruptured over a blood vessel. By the time the doctors got into my belly, about half of my blood volume was in my pelvis. So I really thought that this was the end. This actually is my operative note. Um, I was so grateful to wake up that I knew that I was gonna be a doctor, save other people's lives like my own had been saved. So I got into medical school and not surprisingly, um, became a surgeon. After I finished my residency, I went into private practice. Um, and I've had the honor of treating tens of thousands of patients. You know, often I would just sit in my office, look around and say, I cannot believe I'm getting paid to do the thing that I love to do. So once my practice was settled, it was time for me to start my family. Um, I was blessed to get pregnant and felt great during my whole pregnancy, operated my whole pregnancy and gave birth to this beautiful little boy. Well, I had a plan. I converted one of my exam rooms to a nursery and um, I had my office manager, Linda, take care of my boy when I was off operating and treating patients. Well, this worked okay until my son got a little older and I just really couldn't ignore the fact that he was a little different. He wasn't doing the things that other kids did. And when he wasn't talking, I pushed my pediatrician for an evaluation and he was found to have broad spectrum developmental delay. That was the worst day of my life. He was enrolled in this special state funded school. And I thought, what have I done to my son? I had operated my whole pregnancy. I'd exposed him in utero to anesthetic gases and, and fluoroscopy and all sorts of things. And what I decided to do was take a leave from my practice to really dedicate myself to helping my son be the best person that he could be. I supported my family by being an expert in medical malpractice lawsuits. You always hate it when you see that kind of x-ray. 
Um, the great news is that after my son was in this special school for a year, he was retested and booted out because he met all of the developmental landmarks. All of my worries about, oh my God, would my son ever be able to live independently have been put to rest. He's a college student right now. He's actually doing an internship with um, a program funded by the National Science Foundation. If you met him, you'd never, ever have a clue that he got off to this rough start. I am so happy to say. At the end of this year, though, of drama, I asked what next? And I knew I could go back to the operating room. But I also had a really life-changing experience. And I thought, how many people have been a doctor, a patient, a family caregiver? How many people have had a life-threatening situation, have saved lives, and are worried about the lives of people that they love? Further, I spent the year seeing how medical care went off track. So in 2000, I decided to start a consulting company intended to helping doctors and patients collaborate more effectively to get better medical outcomes at a lower cost. And I thought, I am going to be wildly successful. But the deal is I struggled and struggled. I hired coaches, I went to courses, I got mentors. I spent about as much in my marketing training as I did in medical school. And I remember going over to Europe for a meeting and I went to plug in my laptop and as you know, Europe is wired differently. So you can't just plug your laptop directly into the wall. You need an adapter. And at that moment, I had a, I had a flash of insight. Oh my God, I as a doctor am wired differently than business-minded people. If I could only create this adapter, I will get different results. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. So... I'm humbled to say that I'm a keynote speaker at national meetings. I've written any number of books. I'm regularly quoted in the media. I'll tell you, it's a real experience when you answer your smartphone and it's CNN calling to get your opinion about a recent event in the news. Now, I am not telling you this to boast. I am telling you that having this insight, having this adapter, building the bridge between the world of business and the world of medicine transformed my results. In 2008, I started hearing more and more of my doctor clients talking about their struggles with money. Um, I heard about doctors dipping into their 401ks. I heard about doctors going bankrupt, and I knew why. It's because I wasn't the only one who lacked business savvy and who lacked insights about how to build wealth and get that financial foundation. So I started talking with more and more doctors about their money stories. And I started seeing clients whose real issue was money. Like this, this woman doctor came to me, she had been morbidly obese and she had transformed her life. And now she wanted to start a multidisciplinary team, sort of a resort to share the lessons that she had learned. I said, that sounds like just an awesome vision, but you know, it's gonna take a while for you to actually generate profit. You know, how much cash reserve do you have? And she said, cash reserve, are you kidding? I'm wondering how I'm gonna make next month's mortgage. So clearly somebody who does not have a financial foundation is gonna be limited. And I thought, well, gee, I'm not gonna give this financial advice. I mean, I've made every financial mistake the doctors have made. But what if I could help groom financial advisors to help these doctors? So I had people I could send my doctor clients to. So that's really the origin of targeting doctors. So my secret sauce that I bring to you and I bring to doctors is characterizing the differences between the world of medicine and the world of business. So this bridge works both ways. I help you as a professional financial advisor go and work with doctors. But increasingly, I'm helping doctors cross the bridge so that they approach their medical practice and their careers in a more business-minded sense. That's not the language that I use with them, but that's the reality of what I do. All right. Again, getting back to full disclosure, I've tried things that haven't worked. I've hired coaches and mentors who've set me back. And 
I can't predict your results. So I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. If you just heard about me, you don't really know if I'm the real deal or not. And I get that. I've been there. I've done it. So whenever I meet somebody new, I try to do things to help protect them. And that thing that I do is I offer a 30-day unconditional guarantee so people can see for themselves whether I'm the real deal and whether I'm the kind of person they want to get their advice from. Okay, how the current climate impact doctors. Well, more doctors are open to conversation about finances because they've got more acute financial pain. I mean, there are some people who are going to be helped by the new tax law. The group that's going to be harmed, say the experts, are the high earning professionals like doctors and lawyers. So doctors, they've got a lot of reasons to have financial pain. So they're seeking experts to solve complex financial problems. So some of the doctor financial do-it-yourselfers, and about half of them are do-it-yourselfers, are sort of throwing up their hands and saying, this isn't a do-it-yourself project anymore. So more and more of them are open um, to advice from the experts. You know, how can I move up retirement by five or 10 years? How can I minimize my tax burdens? Um, unfortunately, your access to physicians is further restricted. So it's always been hard to get past that gatekeeper. But there are a number of changes that have come with the Affordable Care Act that make it even more difficult for you to reach them. Um, in addition, some of these doors are closing because of this heightened awareness of financial conflicts of interest. So this is one of my speaking um, contracts, and it's pretty common in that you have to declare your potential conflicts. And if you've got a financial conflict, in other words, if what you're going to talk about will ultimately benefit you financially, oftentimes the doors are closed. So how did this come to be? Well, they don't want some pharmaceutical rep um, coming up and talking about all the benefits of their drug because they know that people will say anything to help sell more drugs. So many of my financial advisors have attracted doctors through speaking engagements and these platforms are increasingly getting close to them. So bottom line, the opportunities and the barriers to the medical market are higher than they've ever been. And if I were to talk about this trend over the past, well, two or so years, it's been this barrier to entry. It's getting harder and harder to get knee to knee with doctors and engage doctors. Okay, so let's dig in to the real meat of why we're here. Okay, so why, with all of the challenges, would you be interested in working with doctors? And the simple answer is Sutton's Law. It's where the money is. When Willie Sutton, who was a bank robber, was asked, why do you rob banks? He said, it's where the money is. According to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, nine out of the top 10 earners call themselves doctors. It's a huge market. There are 800,000 practicing physicians, 200,000 practicing dentists. And this is a market that's not going to be outsourced. I mean, it's hard to believe some of the businesses that have gone out of business like Schwinn. You know, medical care is never going to be outsourced. It's a growth market. Further, about 40% of physicians are age 50 or older. And so we know that that's the demographic with the assets. But this is the most important number. Half of doctors say that they're behind in retirement planning. Only half of doctors are working with professional financial advisors. The data shows that the doctors who are most likely to be ready for retirement are those working with financial advisors. So we've got these do-it-yourselfers who are thinking it's time for a change. Further, doctors are very loyal clients. So once you acquire doctor clients, you will pretty much have them for life. And this is a little different than the, the affluent market in general where client acquisition is not nearly the challenge as client retention. Just turn that all around with doctors. Next, doctors gossip with each other. And if you do something good, if you offer them real value, they are gonna tell 
their doctors about you. That's one of the differences between suits and white coats. You know, if you know something really great, you want to keep this a secret and use it as your competitive advantage. That's the exact opposite of what doctors do. When doctors find something that works, they want to shout it from the rooftop. And so when doctors need something, what do they do? They go to other doctors. That's how I find, found my financial advisor. One day I got a big check. I went to my buddy Bob and said, Bob, I got a big check. What do I do? He said, you need a financial advisor. Here, go and see my guy. He does a good job. And because of my trust in Bob, before I even called the financial advisor, I had sort of decided that this was my guy. I mean, he would have had to do something terrible in order for me not to go to him. So this is incredibly powerful. The doctor's influence over other doctors. And the key to success here is learning how to harness this, learning how to get doctors to talk about you with other doctors so that basically they're an extension of your sales force. This is something that they naturally do. And with the right language, with the right coaching, getting this thing going is a key to success. All right, so in most markets, you're kind of like the hunter gatherer. You wanna bag your next big client and then go on and bag the next one. But because of the nature of doctors, you're, you can cultivate this culture of introductions. So the goal and the practice of high-performing financial advisors is to become a go-to guy or gal among groups of doctors who are like-minded, who all network together. Okay, and doctors have acute financial pain. There are some real problems. Um, all right, so why now? Why, why is this a good time to be entering the medical market? Well, let me just tell you a little story. I love my dentist. And every year when I went to see my dentist, he said, you know, we should probably replace that filling in your left lower by cuspid. It's a big filling. Over time, the fillings retract. It's not causing any problems now, but it could be in the future. And I kept on putting it off year after year after year because I was busy. It wasn't a priority for me and it wasn't causing any problems. But I will tell you that the day that I got a micro abscess under my gum, I was in the dentist that day because it hurt then. So for doctors, retirement is a way off. They're not feeling the pain. They see a lot of productive years and they think tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. However, they're having acute financial pain today with the rising costs and the costly regulatory change. So they might not be looking for a retirement solution per se, but they are looking for a way to get on solid financial footing. So this is a good time for you. We are also seeing epidemic levels of burnout. So it's estimated that about 40% of physicians this year will be burned out. When they ask what is causing the burnout, often it's I'm working too many hours. I'm dealing with all of these changes. Basically what they're saying is I'm having to work harder to make the same amount of money. You know, they could go back to three quarters time work and alleviate some of the stress. The reason that they don't is they don't want their incomes to go down. And then when they ask doctors, well, what would you need in order to not burn out? They say more money. So in a sense, what you offer is a burnout prophylaxis and treatment. So I'm seeing more and more burned out doctors turning to financial advisors for the first time, as I said, to move up retirement by five or 10 years. So as you're talking with doctors, you wanna find out, hey doctor, are you feeling burned out? Are you still experiencing the joy in the practice of medicine? So all of these sources of acute financial pain are your business opportunities and how do you do it? Well, let me just tell you about power prospecting in 2018. So I'd like to talk about three principles that you want to apply. I'd like to show you the three go-to marketing campaigns that I highly recommend. 
and I'd like to show you three mistakes to avoid. So one of the first principles is use a system. Every time you go and see a doctor, they use the same system. They sit down with you and ask you what seems to be the problem. Then they ask questions, then they examine you, then they sit down with you and say, these are the puzzle pieces. Here's how I put the puzzle pieces together. Based on this assessment, here's my recommended plan. So when I teach medical students, I teach them every step of this highly choreographed dance. And so um, as I study people who are highly successful, what I see is that most successful business people have a system too. So I worked very hard in order to craft a system to help people acquire doctor clients. It's in um, this uh, course that I offer, the Cracking the Physician Code course. And so I've got a system, but you've got a system too that's helped you achieve the level of success that you enjoy right now. And so the question for you is how can you tweak your system to be successful in the medical market? Next, understand your buyer. So think back to the Shark Tank lesson. You know, you've really got to understand how doctors think so that you can engage them. I mean, you could help anyone. Everyone builds wealth in the same way. Everyone wants the same thing. They want to be successful. They want to take care of their family. They want to leave a legacy. But in order to engage doctors, in order to, you know, have a, a chance to hit a home run, you've got to get up to the plate. And understanding how they think is important. And just keep in mind that doctors behave like tropical fish. They tend to congregate together and they tend to move together under the same direction. And they do that for the same reason that tropical fish do. They do it to protect themselves from the predator. Now, I've been taken advantage but by financial predators and all sorts of other predators. And so one of the big questions that doctors ask is, whom can I trust? And the best person to ask, whom can I trust? is another colleague. So again, you know, understanding this group mentality, understanding that doctors want to help other doctors can really help you. And I will tell you that the rate at which your practice grows in the medical market is the rate at which you build trust. And neuroscience is really helping us understand the science of trust building. So you can apply that. Okay, next is to harness the law of reciprocity and know what the buy button is. So who does the absolute best job of, of influencing the purchasing choices of doctors? It's the pharmaceutical industry. They invest research dollars, not just in new drugs, but in what works to sell their product. And what they know is that the law of reciprocity works. So if they start the relationship with the doctor by giving them a gift, they know that the doctor is much more likely to reciprocate and give them some of their time and attention. This is really magical. The best way for you to start a relationship with the doctor is to give them something that they value. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if you've ever trained a puppy, but you know, if you want to teach them to come, you know, what you probably want to do is put them in a sit and then give the come command and then reward them with a little treat. What happens if you try to teach them to come by, by moving towards them? Well, they think it's a game and they just try to go away. They run away from you. If you try to chase doctors, you get the same kind of results. What you want to do is attract doctors to you by having a whole arsenal of yummy treats, of things that really work. One of the breakthrough ideas over this past year has been the power of this particular yummy treat, the myth of the rich doctor. This started out as a blog post I wrote on vacation. I came back to see that it had gone viral. It had been picked up by Doximity, which is the LinkedIn for doctors. And I came back to invitations to speak. I mean, it, it was pretty amazing. So I thought, if it's this powerful, 
And is this different than anything else that I've ever written before? Why don't I just expand it into a book? So I did. And if you read a copy of this book, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just the trends that I've seen after listening to the stories of many, many, many doctors. And I sort of approach money like a patient. So, you know, doctors know how to help patients achieve wealth. This book is using that medical metaphor to talk about how to achieve optimal financial health. So um, this book has, has wheels. I mean, it is really amazing to see doctors' eyes light up. And so if you want a yummy treat, I would really recommend that you consider an investment in this. I'm happy to sell you this book at my cost, which is about $4 a book plus shipping. But this is the absolute perfect yummy treat. Okay, so let so those are the three ideas. Now let's go into the three marketing campaigns that truly, truly work. Um, this is what I really recommend you go to on a regular basis. I call it the do you know campaign. It's where you go to people who, who know, like, and trust you and say, you might not know this about me, but I'm actually dedicated to serving the doctors who serve the community. If you have any doctors who are wondering about their financial health, please invite them to contact me. I would be happy to give them a copy of the book, The Myth of the Rich Doctor. Um, and so the, the basic idea is you go to people who know, like, and trust you. Let them know what you do. Let them know that you're helping doctors. Everybody knows a doctor. They've got a doctor neighbor, a doctor at the club, um, a doctor in the stands of their kid's soccer game. Um, and if you're a friend to a doctor, you're hearing about these financial struggles. And if you're a friend and you hear somebody struggling and you hear about something that can help them, of course you want to connect these things. So this is, this is the fastest and easiest way to acquire more doctor clients. And you can do this on a quarterly basis. Um, you can go to them with a different yummy treat. Technology is also helping you do this in different ways. Um, I recently went to um, a funeral of a friend that I've had since elementary school. And so I got a chance to see other people who I haven't seen for years and years and years. And one of my very, very close buddies, it turns out to be a dentist now who is in charge of education at a major academic institute. I never knew that. Well, you know what? It's easier than ever to get connected with people in all sorts of different parts of your life. Like if you go on LinkedIn, you can do a search um, for alumni from your college and it'll pull up their profiles. Maybe one of your fraternity or sorority um, brothers or sisters is now a doctor. You can reach out to them on LinkedIn because they, if you didn't know that they were a doctor, they might not know what you did. It's really easy to reach out to people on Facebook. So I would recommend sort of telling everyone. Um, I've had people who have gotten new doctor clients from their barber or their hairdresser. I mean, the hairdresser is kind of like a therapist chair. So if a doctor's there talking about, you know, the financial struggles, you know, I might have to pull the kids out of private school. I just, you know, I don't know what my plan is. You know, imagine if your hairdresser even had a stack of these books that she could give to doctors. Um, this is powerful because remember the speed at which your practice grows is the speed at which you build trust. And the people who trust you know doctors who trust them. So you're adding a link in the chain of trust. Campaign number two is the power partner campaign. So this is where you go out and you build relationships with people who have lists of doctors. So, you know, probably the standard thing that you're taught is, well, you can go and you can, you know, take a CPA out to lunch or send them a doctor client and then, you know, have 
ask them to send one to you. So that is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is strategically identifying people who influence other doctors and who want to be more successful themselves. And this Power Partner campaign is really about helping your power partner get what they want and in so doing, help you get what you want. So let me give you a couple of examples. There are lenders who would like to get more doctors and dentists to borrow money from them. Well, many of these financial institutions have big, big budgets. Um, why do they got somebody like you in to give a talk about the difference between good debt and bad debt? and show them how wealth building really means leverage. So in other words, you were giving the lender more ammunition for doctors to take out more money. That is a great power partner. What about building a relationship with people who sell medical malpractice insurance? Okay, think about it like this. Doctors who are worried about money engage in distracted doctoring. It's kind of like texting and driving. It's not a good thing to do. That means that doctors who are worried about money are more likely to be negligent, to harm patients, and to be sued. So what if you partnered with a medical, one of these people who sold disability insurance and invited them to have you in to talk about this relationship between money and clinical performance and some basic principles to get on a solid financial foundation. That is a win all around. Let me also say that because the myth of the rich doctor has been so powerful, I offer people the option of um, putting their name on the front of the book so you can actually write a foreword. So, the, so your name would be on the front of the book on the back cover, there would be your name, your bio, and your picture right below mine. And in the afterward, there's a call to action so that the next step is with you. So you could potentially have these books and um, give them away, you know, even distribute a digital copy of the book. You could say to this person, you know, please, here, please feel welcome to distribute this to all of your list. So, um, Help your power partners get to where they want by helping you get what you want. So instead of taking a CPA out to lunch and telling them how great you are, you ask them, would you like to get more doctor clients? And if they say yes, bring an idea to them. Well, how about if we co-host a webinar? I can uh, bring, in a doc uh, bring in an expert to talk about practice valuation you know, how doctors can get the optimal purchase price for their practice. Um, so do something creative. Um, and, and it's not just give me, give me. It's really about what would you like? How can I help you get there? All right, so let me offer you just a couple more ideas about great power partners. Um, you can reach out to the executive directors of medical associations. Um, so basically, most doctors belong to at least one tribe, and that tribe is their medical specialty. So I belong to a number of associations. I belong to, well, I'm a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. And by the way, those, that's what the initials FACS mean after my name, fellow of the American College of Surgeons. So I'm board certified and I'm credentialed. Um, I also belong to the state chapter of the American College of Surgeons. Every summer there was a, a meeting that sort of doubled as a family vacation at a resort. I was a member of the um, Women's um, uh, Surgeon Association. I was involved with Seattle Surgical, so that's a local surgical association. Okay, all of these associations have dues paying members. And why do people pay the fees? It's because they get value. And so the executive directors of these associations are always trying to figure out like how to add more value. So you 
could find out what their initiatives are, what are they focused on this year, set up an appointment and ask them, you know, is there any way that I can help you deliver more value to your doctors? Now, it used to be that maybe you could swing delivering a talk to these associations. That's one thing that's really changed this year. It's harder and harder to get on these platforms, but you can partner with a doctor or partner with another expert and potentially get on their platform. So ex executive um, directors of medical associations are really, really great. Okay, the third campaign is to get a doctor to toot your horn. Personally, I've always hated to toot my own horn. I much prefer for somebody else to toot my horn. And why not? Because we know of the power of doctors to um, influence other doctors. What if you could groom doctors to basically be a part of your team and tell other doctors about you? So you can do this on an informal way. When you have existing doctor prospects and clients, what you can do is you can coach them to talk with you about you know, the kinds of results that you've helped them get. Um, you can encourage them to give away copies of the myth of the rich doctor. And again, I'm going back to that, but when I say the myth of the rich doctor, any yummy treat will work but just make sure it's a really great yummy treat that doctors really want. So you can encourage them to hand them out, but you can really take this to the next level. And, um, and get them to um, introduce you. So maybe what you want to do is invite one of your great doctors to be a member of your advisory board. So you actually physically have a doctor on your site. That does a great job of building credibility. If you give a talk, have a doctor introduce you. Have the doctor help you promote the speaking event. Um, even You might wanna even share the platform for them. Um, have a doctor make a presentation with you or for you. Um, but here is like the breakthrough idea for me for 2018. It sort of started by accident. So um, there was an advisor who was gonna do a seminar. And you know, they did the whole seminar thing, wedding invitation, all that stuff. But I thought, well, gee, what if I wrote um, an invitation? Or what if they sent a follow-up letter from me with my return address, explaining to them why they might be interested in attending these events? And then we took it one step further. What if I were actually at the seminar? signing books at the end. And when I did that over this past year, you know, as I signed books, I would ask doctors, well, why is it that you're here? And doctors will say, well, I never got an invitation from a doctor. I never get a chance to hear a doctor speak. I, I came to get a signed book. So I really saw the power of this letter. Further, what I know is that the letters that you send, they're probably going to be put in the circular file by the gatekeeper but a, an office assistant would never dream of screening out a letter from another physician. It gets through. So it's sort of like I really understood my power to like open the red velvet rope and get financial advisors through. So what I've recently started doing is offering to write a letter of recommendation. And I just like to go through this letter because you were welcome to take this idea. If you've got a doctor evangelist, if you've got a doctor in your community who would be willing to write this letter for you, please take this campaign and run with it. Okay, so it says, dear doctor, what is the state of your financial health? I've come to discover that we doctors as a group face challenges translating our high incomes into wealth. I've also discovered that thriving physicians and dentists approach wealth building fundamentally differently than their struggling colleagues. My name is Vicki Rackner. After a career as a practicing surgeon and clinical faculty at the University of Washington School of Medicine, I started helping doctors design practice and lives that work for them. Then a funny thing happened. I started talking with more and more physicians and dentists about the ultimate taboo topic, money. I found that I was not the only doctor who lost money in dumb doctor deals. 
or got financial advice from the wrong people or didn't know what I didn't know. As I spoke with hundreds of doctors about their money stories, trends emerged. In my latest book, The Myth of the Rich Doctor, I summarized the habits that separate thriving doctors from struggling doctors. While we personally don't know each other, I want you to thrive too. While I'm not a financial advisor, I know that a solid financial foundation give doctors more personal and professional options to help them. Conversely, doctors' financial concerns can erode joy and place them at increased risk for burnout. I'd like to offer you a complimentary copy of my book, The Myth of the Rich Doctor. To get your doctor, simply reach out to my colleague, and then you put your name in. You, you invested in specialized training to understand the unique financial needs and demands of physicians and dentists. This supports his or her mission of helping doctors achieve financial freedom to do what they want to do when they want to do it. And hot tip, as you talk about wealth building, talk about wealth as the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Okay, then you know you're welcome to embed this little cartoon that talks about sort of the iceberg that doctors face as they try to navigate too well. And um, then you know you can offer them the book. So how does this work? It works great. I've only got a couple of months of experience with this, but this works incredibly well. So you can get a doctor in your community to do sort of a similar thing, um, to maybe tell their story about the transformation from getting up at three in the morning, worrying about whether or not they're ever gonna retire to security about a financial foundation, and then have them offer some yummy treat too. I would recommend against suggesting that those doctors go in and just set up an appointment with you. Um, if you activate the law of reciprocity, if you give something great first, it really helps. All right, so let me quickly talk about three mistakes. Mistake number one is the failure to fit in. So remember, there's this tribal mentality. Doctors wanna know, are you one of us? So make sure that you know the rules and the culture. So I spent a month operating in Thailand. And before I went, somebody explained to me how to be polite in Thailand. Like they specifically said, don't touch people on the top of your head. Why I do that, I have no idea, but don't do that. Well, there are certain things that you should and should not do. For example, in the world of business, we default to the first name. In the world of medicine, you default to the doctor title. So when you're dealing with any doctor, please, please use their doctor title. They'll invite you to use their first name. This will happen quickly. Wait for that to happen you could potentially lose the sale at hello and you don't want to do that. You want to use the right words. You want to use the right language. If you don't know what a word means, um, ask somebody. You know, if you have on your website that you help doctors and dentists, you are going to insult dentists because dentists are doctors. What you want to say instead is physicians and dentists. So it's sort of like doctors, consider doctors like vegetables. And then there are different kinds of vegetables. There's carrots, there's cucumbers. Okay, those are like different kinds of doctors. And if you use the wrong words, people will think that you're not really an insider. Okay, mistake number two is moving too fast. So building a relationship with a doctor is, is sort of like, you know, finding a, a lifelong partner. You want to sort of take it step by step and if you try to move too quickly, if you talk about how many kids you want to have, you know, on the first date, chances are good that you're going to scare somebody off. Well, remember that for doctors, money is the ultimate taboo topic. So if you ask them to open their financial kimono too quickly, it could potentially scare them off. So what you want to do is you want to offer some value. You want to talk in general about, you know, advice that doctors might want to integrate in into their practices to help them. But, but wait and have some sensitivity before you ask doctors to tell you how much money they have or to show you their tax returns. And you'll know when that time is. So just think back to your dating experience and just take it slow. You know, I, I remember sort of um, a patient who was crashing in the cardiac cath lab instead of opening up the vessel that uh, fed the heart, 
the vessel got closed and this guy was dying. So we just crashed the patient to the operating room, threw betadine on the chest, and we had to get in there to save this guy's life. Well, in this rush, I was trying to like glove him down really quickly. And the scrub nurse said to me, slow down. A man in a hurry takes it slowly. So paradoxically, the slower you move, the faster you're gonna get results. And mistake number three is giving up too soon. The people in the pharmaceutical industry know that they've got to expose a doctor to a message between seven and 10 times before a doctor changes prescribing patterns. So what you would like to do is understand this from the beginning. You know, you don't want to call a doctor seven times and ask, well, when are you going to come in and see me? No, instead, why don't you just make a plan to drip value onto doctors on a regular basis? And I think a really great thing that I've seen work is for financial advisors to create short how-to videos. So think about the questions that your doctor prospects and clients ask you. You know, like, how do I pay back my medical school debt? Should I buy or lease a car? Um, how do I minimize my taxes? What if you created videos, like one to two minute videos, with just, you know, one or two little tips or questions? I mean, you don't want to actually offer financial advice. You know, it's not going to get through compliance and it's not good medical practice. I'm, I'm often on the radio talking about healthcare consumerism um, ideas. And, you know, if the host presses me for something like, okay, well, what vitamins should people take? How much vitamin D is safe? You know, what I'll say is, I care about your listeners too much to give exact financial advice. I think that people should be getting advice from the doctors who know their whole source. However, here are some questions that you might want to take to your doctors. So in the same way, your videos could be, here are some questions to be asking yourself as you're considering this issue. All right, so you could create you know, 12 of these one to two minute videos and then just drip this on your list every month. You've now got a year of marketing material. It doesn't really matter what your drip method is. The important thing is, is that you've got one, that you're actually delivering value to doctors on a regular basis. And if you do this digitally, it doesn't matter how many people are on your list, so keep people on your list forever. You know, I've spoken with advisors who've had relationships with doctors for years before finally doctors pulled the trigger and went to them. Um, oh, let me also point out, um, with this information from the pharmaceutical industry, I got kind of curious. So I went back to my best financial advisors and, and said, you know, why don't you pull out your, your doctor clients and figure out how many contacts do the doctor have with you before they actually convert it? And, you know, I was expecting a bell-shaped curve around maybe five or six or seven. But most of the advisors had two, two peaks in this curve. And... What was interesting is that the way the doctor got connected determined the number of contacts they had before conversion. So when somebody was referred into, through family, friends, and fans, they converted very quickly. And that's kind of like the story I told you about how I found my financial advisor. But if somebody went to um, a webinar or got a mailing or you know, read an article that you wrote someplace, it took a lot longer. It's sort of like you had to build your trust over time instead of just borrowing trust from somebody else. So know that the kind of marketing campaigns that you launch is gonna make a difference. Okay, so to optimize success in the medical market, be generous. Stock your closet with some yummy treats, with some things that you know that doctors want and be willing to give these things away. Be generous with your time. Be generous with your advice. You want, don't want to give away everything, right? But you can hand out little pearls of wisdom, and that will go a long way. Um, plan a great first date. Don't move too quickly. Your goal on the first date is to get to a second date. Um, position yourself as a medical expert by having a physician on your team. And if you want to conduct business with doctors, you want to conduct yourself as one. 
So I want to thank you for being here. I hope that you got an idea or two that you can run with no matter what your market is, because some of these core ideas are the same no matter whom you serve. So as you know, I have a real commitment to helping financial advisors achieve higher levels of success. So I would be remiss if I did not tell you about ways that I might be able to help you uh, become more successful by acquiring more doctor clients. Um, this is this feels salesy and promotionally to me. So if you're not interested in sort of a sales pitch, um, I thank you. You're welcome to get back to your busy life. Um, but if you're really committed to taking action, let me show you how I can help you get the competitive advantage. Um, the first is something free. On the Targeting Doctor site, I deliver weekly videos with uh, a marketing tip. Please feel welcome to get on the list and get some weekly tips. Um, you know, if you just get 1% better every week, by the end of the year, you're going to be significantly better. All right. If you want to build a physician friendly practice, and my most successful financial advisors, you know, don't have two or 300 clients, they have like between 50 and 100 doctors. So if you want to build the infrastructure, to support a thriving practice working with doctors, I highly recommend the Cracking the Physician Code course. Um, the same content is available as a home study kit where you get um, the video tutorials, you get a written workbook. You can also get this content in a live web-based course. Um, the next session begins September 10th. And so what we, um, what we do is we don't just go through the system, we sort of figure out how to apply the information to you. So for example, one of the first steps in building a physician-friendly practice is to identify these tribes, these groups of doctors who are like-minded, who network with each other. And I offer some ideas about, you know, what tribes might make sense for you. Well, in the home study kit, you sort of have that idea, and you can think about it yourself. If you're part of the live web-based course, we spent some time coaching. So after you've gotten a chance to think about it, you come back with your ideas and I can comment on your ideas. So it's not just learning the information, but learning how the information applies to me. Um, I really recommend that you take this step. If you don't wanna go through a course, you know, I've got coaching packages where we can just dive in and, and grab the information in a way that's important for you. And so it won't take 12 hours. You know, we can do this in a much more uh, time effective way. I offer coaching and mentoring packages. So like if you've got a meeting with a key physician opinion leader and you want to make sure that your ducks are ducks are all, ducks are all, ducks are all in a row just to help you prepare for a specific event or a specific meeting. I also offer ongoing mentoring um, to, to really help make sure that you are on track. You know, some people just get me up for um, sort of a retainer purpose, just so that they can have me in their back pocket so when something comes up, they know that they can reach out to me. I've got done for your marketing campaign. So I've got all of this marketing material that I've created for doctors that you can take and run with. These can be your yummy treats. These can be things that you co-brand, including this ebook that's very, very popular about how to get more patients starting today. So every doctor, no matter how successful, no matter how long you've got to wait to get into their office, they want more patients. Even employed physicians sometimes have bonuses that are tied to their productivity. So, you know, doctors are thinking about getting more patients for the same reason that Apple advertises. It's just smart business. And so this ebook is, is basically how doctors can do that. This is something that pretty much every doctor would be interested in. You know, you can create your own yummy treat. Maybe you have some tips about how doctors can make the tax code work for them. Um, or, you know, answers to doctors frequently asked questions. Um, 
All right, another great one, especially for doctors in private practice, is uh, my book, The New Thriving Practice, How to Get Off the Hamster Wheel, Work Smarter, Not Harder, Generate More Revenue, and Enjoy Greater Career Satisfaction in the Era of the Affordable Care Act. Great for private practice. This is really the go-to yummy treat. This is the, this is the one that's worked. I've got some special reports that you have access to, and I also want to remind you that um, I've got a package in which you can actually put your name on the front of the book, write a custom forward, and write a custom afterward. If you really want the blazing gun, if you have decided, okay, this is it, I am going to do something dramatic and really make a footprint in the medical market this year. I've got something that I call the Power Prospecting Package. And the goal is to, um, as one of my mentors says, kick ass and say and spare no um, enemies. It's to just get in front of Dr. Prospects in the next 90 days with a focused, disciplined effort. So this is an exclusive program for explosive results. This is not for most people. Let me just say this. Okay, but this is a good fit if like you're a veteran in the medical market and you decide, okay, I wanna deal with doctors exclusively or I wanna work with more doctors. If you wanna just jump in and say, you know, I've always dreamed about working with doctors. I wanted to be a cardiologist when I was a kid, but then life got in the way. So if you just, always known in your heart that this is something you want to do, that's great. If you want to leverage the kinds of opportunities with the Affordable Care Act and the new tax laws, like you see this as an opportunity, this is great. If you want the most direct path to success, this is it. This is me taking you by the hand, partnering with you, opening that red velvet curtain and helping you get in. And if you want to sort of have an exclusive relationship. So I'm not opening the red velvet curtain for other financial advisors in your geographic area. That's another value of this package. Okay, this package is not a good fit for the same people that the webinar was not a good fit. If you're looking for a get rich quick scheme or a do nothing scheme or your only goal is to make money, this is not yet. No, even though I am partnering with you and opening the red velvet curtain, um, cord. This is a lot of work. I'm going to help you with it. I'm going to guide you through it. But, you know, this is not just me delivering clients to you. Okay, so here's how it works. In the first week, you and I get together. We identify your business goals. I sort of figure out what you've done to make you successful so far. And then we'll think about your possible tribes, you know, those groups of doctors that you want to work with. In the next week, you and I will work together to create your expert positioning, sort of your story about how you work with doctors and why doctors and how you got involved in financial services. Um, we'll, we'll create a compelling bio and we'll use this to craft a forward and afterward for a custom version of the myth of the rich doctor, your co-branded version, which is part of the package. Um, in week three, we will gather intelligence about the resources in your local neighborhood. We'll talk about you know, who the key position opinion leaders are, who some of the power partners are, what the associations are that you might want to know about, and just kind of gather local boots on the ground intelligence. So we've got a plan for you. Um, next, um, you and I will together shoot an on-demand webinar. So what you can do is introduce me. Um, so you're the host, you are the expert, and you introduce me and I can deliver some content. Maybe it's the myth of the rich doctor. Um, maybe it's the new thriving medical practice. Um, there are a number of things that doctors want to know about. Or I could interview you. I could put on my hat as founder of Thriving Doctors, and I could interview you as my guest and ask you some questions that we agree on in advance. And the goal of this would be to position you as the expert. And, and what I would do in this video is, you know, I'm not just gonna out and out endorse you. 
But what I, what I am going to do is talk about why physicians should work with somebody just like you and the qualities that you possess that make me think that you are a great person for doctors to work on. So this will be an on-demand webinar. So this is one of your yummy treats. This is something that you can give to your power partners to distribute. If you meet a new doctor prospect, this is something that you can deliver. And then in weeks five to 12, we're gonna talk about you know, scripts and templates to actually get out there and implement. How are you going to get me to meet? And this is going to be discipline. I'm going to kind of push you because I want to see you get results. And that's really what I'm about, about results. Okay, so as part of the package, you're welcome to participate in the, the Cracking the Physician Code course that starts on September 10th. If you don't want to invest that time, that's fine. I'm happy to do, I'm happy to deliver this content to you sort of one-on-one -on -one in a very streamlined way. Um, you're going to get this custom version of the book. You're going to get two versions of the digital book. One is the complete version, and the other is a, a teaser version. So it's the cover, the table of contents, the, your foreword, the introduction, and the book through the first chapter. And then after that, it says, if you like this and want more, reach out to me and I'll send you the whole book. So you might not want to give away the whole book to your power partners. This might be a better fit for you. Um, so you get a, a marketing campaign. We give you a marketing plan. We help you identify your ideal client, your power partners, your speaking opportunities. You'll get a plan about how to leverage this co-branded book as a power prospecting tool. What that means is that you also get this letter of introduction that I showed you, it's gonna be customized. It's gonna be, it's gonna talk about you as a person. So I will tell your story. Um, you get a whole sales funnel. So you get to choose your tribes, identify key physician opinion leaders. Um, sorry about that. Um, uh, we'll create marketing campaigns and set up sales funnels. Like, what are you going to drip on a regular basis? And I will help you create those things. So for example, if you wanted to do it easy, maybe you want to take my 12 most popular articles um, from, that I've written from Physicians Money Digest. I mean, you've got to attribute me, um, but, but maybe you offer a comment on those articles. But we've just got to have something to give you those seven to 10 contacts um, to give you the chance to um, get an at bat with doctors who already know you. Um, so you'll get done for you scripts and templates and instructions to engage family, friends, and fans, and power partners, and people on LinkedIn. We can also brainstorm about sponsors. You know, there are corporations that have sponsorship dollars. There are people out there who would love to get in front of doctors. You know, maybe your Porsche dealer might be interested in, in throwing $1,000 at a breakfast that you host for doctors. So we'll also think creatively about how you can fund your marketing efforts. That doesn't mean self-funding or, or maybe going to your own vendors because the marketing dollars are out there. Anybody who advertises in a medical publication, anyone who has a booth at a medical meeting is making a significant investment to bring their message to doctors. And you can offer a really unique way of getting in front of doctors, something that you know the, the medical publication cannot offer. And that's an untapped resource. And I can help you do that. Okay, so you're gonna get a presentation as a webinar replay. You'll also get the collateral marketing material to promote the events. Um, and during this presentation, again, I'm gonna emphasize why people should work with something, somebody just like you. Uh, let's say that we have an opportunity to jointly speak at a medical meeting. Um, if I'm on the platform, I'm going to ask you to stand up and I'm going to tell doctors about what makes you special. Okay, so basically you're getting a physician partner. You're getting a doctor who's going to toot your horn and you also get exclusivity. 
So let's say, for example, you wanted to go to the executive director. You can say, you know, hi, um, Dr. Vicki Rackner and I have partnered to help doctors take control of their financial destiny. So you're not going in alone. You're using my name. When you call the gatekeeper, um, you say, hi, I'm partnering with Dr. Vicki Rackner. And you know what? Once somebody hears the word doctor, like they listen in a different way. So, you know, you're going to get through to people. You're going to get your phone calls returned. And with this exclusivity, you will be the only one in your town who gets to say that. Um, okay, so you get a myth of the rich doctor presentation. Okay, so what is the investment? Um, whenever I think about that, I think about the value I'm getting. Okay, so why might you be interested in any of these things? Well, what's the value of a single doctor client? It's probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. What's the value of having a doctor to your horn? What's the value of marketing materials that doctors want or getting your phone calls returned? What's the value of avoiding costly campaigns that don't work? And I know that I could charge tens of thousands of dollars for this, but I, my goal is to help more doctors achieve financial security. My goal is to help empower more financial advisors to help more doctors do that. So I have significantly discounted this program to help make that happen. So you can have access to this power prospecting package for three payments of $26.97 or a single payment of $69.97 um, as a special bonus. Um, if you sign up, I will give you a license for unrestricted distribution of this cartoon. Some people use this cartoon in the front of a note card. Some put it on the back of their business card. A great thing that you can do is just reproduce this on your letterhead. Give a doctor a red pen and say, doctor, circle the three biggest obstacles that you have to wealth building. And then you know how to target your presentation. That works really great. Bonus number two, I will co-brand this Get More Patients Starting Today book. And bonus number three, in addition to getting two digital copies, of the co-branded Myth of the Rich Doctor, you'll also get 50 physical books. Um, now, I wanna warn you, I can only accept a limited number of participants. This consumes a lot of my time. Further, I wanna make sure that I don't already have a relationship in your town with um, somebody who has exclusivity rights. Um, all of my services, and you can see them all on the Targeting Doctor site, come from an, with an unconditional money-back guarantee. So if you start in, you decide I'm not for you, you, you know, you think that you don't agree with my philosophies, you get your money back, no questions asked. Um, so it, to learn more, um, please go to targetingdoctors.com. If the power prospecting package is something that interests you, what I'd like you to do is please drop me an email at info at targetingdoctors.com. So, you know, let's just take the first step and find out if your geographic area is even available be before you go thinking down that path. I also want to let you know that um, I, we have to decide mutually to work with each other. I'm putting my reputation on the line and I wanna make sure that I would feel comfortable going to you to be my financial advisor. And, and by the way, I'm not looking, I, I've already got my relationships set up. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna be promoting you. I need to know that you're the kind of person that I want to promote. And I also want to be able to tell doctors, yes, this person really does understand doctors. So, you know, that's going to be important too. So this is going to involve an interview and both of us will decide whether or not we're a good fit, whether or not we think I can help you get to where you want to be. So let's end with the first question. What is your dream? Why are you here today? What would you like to do? And how can you get there? Again, I want to thank you so much for the time that you invested here today. And, you know, 
please feel welcome to reach out to me if there's any way in which I can help you get to that dream. Thanks so much. Bye-bye for now.